Okay, I previously made a video on how to make a single unit screw retain crown on a Glidewell 6mm tie base. I'm just going to make this video just quickly to go over another option that you have using these titanium bases. Uh, if you have the instance where you actually want to make a custom Emacs abutment on top of a Glidewell 6mm tie base, we certainly can do that. Uh, typically I don't do this, but it, I, I have in the past for certain reasons. Uh, more often than not, I'm using the, the Serona option. Uh, but if you wanted to use the Glidewell tie bases to make an Emacs abutment, uh, you can do that much easier with a Glidewell system because they're so long and parallel. Uh, you can't really mill accurately to the Serona titanium bases because they're too short and circular and they have that uh, custom attachment on there. So in this case we're going to do tooth number 13 and tooth number 14. Uh, they're two 6 millimeter Glidewell tie bases and we're going to make custom Emacs abutments on them and actually parallel them so we can make uh, an Emacs bridge over the top uh, or a two unit splinted uh, restoration over the top. So how we're going to designate this, uh, we're not doing abutment since uh, we're not actually scanning the titanium bases. So we've got the two 6 millimeter Glidewell tie bases. We're just going to call them crown, telescope, 13, 14. Our material is going to be Emacs, and we'll hit OK. Now if we go ahead and look at the images, uh, for the purposes of this example, I just, I just actually took an image on a model of two of the two titanium bases uh, from Glidewell. I didn't take the opposing or the buckle bite. We'll go along to the model phase. And the first thing you, can, you do, you can see I've got these two titanium bases scanned. We need to draw the margins for both of the restorations. So here you can see I went ahead and drew the margins for both those uh, Glidewell tie bases. Uh, define restoration or define insertion axis. It, if you set the model axis right, those should be pretty much accurate right on the button, just on the axis of how they're going to be milled, which they are, so hit OK. Now the important thing is is when you define the restoration axis, okay, you can see just like the abutments where you can angle the custom abutment, with telescopes you also have the ability to angle the telescopes. Okay, there's no uh, uh, 20 degree rule with the telescopes. You can angle them any direction. Since, like I said before, we're going to try to make a bridge, and these abutments are really actually not parallel at all, we need to find a way to parallel these two telescopes on top of these Glidewell tie bases. So the way that you do that, you can't see that here in the video, the way that I'm recording is cutting it off, but below Analyzing Tool, there's an option called Linking. And you want to go ahead and click Linking, and once you hit the linking option down here, you want to select group, and you can see down here, 13 and 14, you kind of have these little handcuffs. You want to go ahead and click on 13 and handcuff these together. Now what, what that does is they're automatically parallel. So you can see that that's not going to quite work here because it's cutting off here a little bit. So we want to just parallel the restorations, both from the, the top angle and the buckler lingual angle just to make sure that everything's okay. And that looks good. We'll hit OK and we'll go ahead and move forward. Now in the parameter step, you're probably not too familiar with the parameters. Uh, just like abutments, I don't worry too much about the parameters with the telescope because you can switch them later. But you got the spacer, the minimal thickness. We're going to keep the minimal thickness again, right around 500 for both. Margin thickness, 100 is good. The cervical shoulder width, you can see right here on this graphical illustration that as I move this out, it's actually controlling the shoulder of the telescope. So this actually is going to control the shoulder of our uh, custom uh, abutment that we're making on these telescopes. So let's go ahead and set it at 700. And we're really not going to worry about the height because like I, I'll show you, we can change that later. So when we hit OK, we'll go ahead and get both of our, of our proposals. Now based on these proposals, you can actually control quite a bit, you know. Uh, we don't have the occlusion here like I said, but let's say you wanted this to be higher, you simply can hit your scale tool, we'll scale occlusal hole, and now you can actually grab this and increase the height. So let's say you want the height there, we'll double click there, again we'll hit the scale occlusal hole, whoops, didn't hit the hole. So you can get them the same height. You can then go ahead, if you want to control the margin, you can actually hit, go down to the margin, move the margin up and down. Obviously you're running into some minimal thickness issues, but that's easily fixed with uh, the circular shape tool. Plus, say you wanted to move the margin up there, 
You can radially go ahead and make the margin bigger or smaller to get rid of that minimal thickness and do the same on the other one. So this will actually, this is what telescopes are all about. You can go ahead and use the six millimeter glide wall tie base to go ahead and make parallel titanium, or excuse me, parallel telescopes to go ahead and make an Emax bridge. Just another option if you want to not do the Serona method for making custom abutments. You can certainly make custom Emax abutments using uh, Emax telescopes on the six millimeter glide wall tie base.